Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Dominique DeJuste, who's a financial professional and CEO of DeJuste Financial. Dominique, welcome to the program. Hey, how you doing there, Mike? Thank you. I truly appreciate it. You are welcome. And I'm excited to talk to you because I know that when every time I talk to people, I learn little nuances of how they have taken their life experiences, both personally and professionally, and turned it into serving their clients. So I want to learn all about what you do. But get us started first with um, your background. What uh, what got you into the financial services industry um, when you, when you uh, found that you wanted to get into that industry? And then what made you think, I'm going to start my own company? Okay, then. Well, well, first of all, I started off, the first movie I ever saw that I enjoyed was Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy Changing Places. That, oh, that, yeah. Remember that movie? I think it was, what, um, 80s? I do what, think so, yep. And there were, he was I, like a beggar on the street. Yes. And when I seen, uh, be honest with you, I saw the numbers. <laughs> and I saw he was in this, and he went from rich to poor. And I said to myself, one day I want to do that. And then when I ended up going to college, I ended up going to um, North Georgia College, and I graduated with a degree in finance. Um, I looked to get into the industry coming out of college, but um, choosing to be commission based was very hard. Yeah. So I ended up start working. And then as I was working, I went from one job, got laid off from another. But, you know, the, those things were in sales dealing with the mortgage. As well as we know, in 2008, the market um, crashed during the mortgage industry. Yeah. Then a young lady I was dating after I worked at race racetrack, the corporate office, I was dating her and her father told me she works for, he works for New York Life. Why don't you get in this industry? And I'm like, nah, I don't want to sell life insurance, just just life insurance. Yeah. Which I found out that I ended up loving. Then he said, <laughs> no, he had realized, you know, back in um, early 2000 when Clinton and them, you know, deregulated the banks and investment. And so they all can be combined as one. And I said, oh, wow. And so, you know, I took my test, my insurance test, and then I ended up, um, didn't go to New York Life, started at MetLife. And it was, you know, it was life changing because one of the things was I always looking for something that I can actually feel that I'm a part of, feel like I'm giving back to because every other job that I was working, I felt like I was just sitting at a desk looking at a computer and I was in the clock. Yeah, yes, the clock and not learning nothing new every day or not even working with people because I found that I am a people person and I love dealing with people. So that's what made me get in this industry. And, you know, eventually I worked at MetLife for about a year. Then a friend of mine told me about the independent company, uh, National Financial Service Group. And when I got over there, it was a big surprise because a lot of things I had to pay for out of my pocket. Yeah. In the beginning, it was a shock. But then the thing was, I said, let me take this information, the knowledge that I'm getting and learn, because one of the things that National Financial Service Group, they showed me a side of the industry that I never could even imagine. You know, they were showing me that I could do pension plans. They're showing me so many exotic ways you could do things with life insurance and anything else within this industry. And then two years of being there, I realized, OK, then I'm getting paid commission. I'm paying them. I said, I love my well May as well go out on your own if you're doing yeah. all that. <laughs> like I said to myself, I, I love my last name. I said, let me create a company that said Dodgers Financial and go ahead and jump out there on faith. And um, soon I jumped out on faith. I had a couple people, a couple of friends of mine that turned around and told me, Dominic, I've been waiting for you to do this, to do business with you. Wow. Because when you work with someone else, Mike, and I'm because I was a career, I was um, a career agent. Now I'm an independent agent where yeah, um, I had to sell that product and push their product. You know, that's an interesting point. And I want to pause right there um, to just clarify that, because if you work for a certain company, you might be limited in what you can provide to your clients. And if it's their products and they say, here's this product and this product, and that's all you've got, you've got to get all excited about that. But as you then study the industry and get to know, you know what's available, you might start feeling um, bad that you're like, wow, I wish I could offer them this and this and this option, but I can't, I'm, I'm stuck. So now the shift into getting out on your own and being independent, you can then focus on your client and, go, and find out exactly what they need and then go out and find it and go, okay, here it is. You're absolutely right. And I'm sorry about saying it was a career, but it's called captive agent. Mm -hmm. that, but you're absolutely right about it. It's one of, that's, that's the thing that um, I didn't like, you know, when I'm sitting down talking to someone and I couldn't give them, you know, I, 
the product that I'm giving to them, even though as long as you got insurance, as long as you have an investment too, you're okay. But all products are not meant for everyone. Yep. And so that's one thing I did learn. Yeah, but you did feel captive being yes. a captive agent. You know, I mean, that's that's the name of it, but you just felt chained. And so now just that freedom. So what are some what were some of the things that you found when you went on your own, the fr- flexibility and freedom that you had? What were some of the things that you then were able to offer to clients that you weren't able to offer before? Oh, some of the things that I can offer is, um, you know, I think MetLife and National Life is, you know, they have some great products. But um, one of the things was that I could have guaranteed issue policies. Those were, those were um, policies I couldn't do, like AIG, specific instance, you're over the age of 50 and you have health issues um, and you can't get no insurance nowhere else. Those two companies wasn't in it, it was going to offer you anything, but mm. you now I can offer those clients a policy to be able to help them bury themselves into their future if anything happened to them, you know, because of their health issues. That's huge. And, and, and just knowing where to go for that now opens up that opportunity to then serve your clients. And then when you're listening to them in, in maybe the initial meetings and you're hearing certain things, you're already starting to evaluate and go, okay, th- this one might, uh, they might need this. And, and you're starting all already starting to navigate what they, what they need there. So I think that's a really huge, huge benefit. Yeah, absolutely. Right. You know, and that's one of the things is that I do believe in that, you know, at the beginning, uh, being an agent, being a capital agent is good because like you said, it gives you the basis. Yeah, you got to learn. You got to learn. You know, what a friend of mine told me, he said, the two, company, two companies I was at, Dominic, you're receiving a Harvard education. You're yep. giving away a whole lot, a lot of money. You're not making a whole lot, but you're learning a lot. And those are the things that, you know, that that I, I can, you know, I can say thank you to the, the young men that um, offer me the opportunity to work at those two companies. Yep. And then you, you, you know, have you ever heard this before? You know, you either win or you, and people go lose and you're like, no, 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 no. You either win or you learn, you know, because you learn from those things. It's not working for those companies. And as a captive agent was not a mistake, you learned, and then you learn what you didn't want to have and you learn what you needed to have. And here you are. So talk a little bit more about some of the challenges that the families you work with face when planning for retirement, um, families, as well as businesses. You know, some of the things that, that I'm learning that families, especially with families, is that they sometimes they wait too late. Hmm. That's what's happening. And where um where we, you know, at Dodgers Financial, we believe in bridging the gap to your financial future. And we want people to start early. So you, you know, one of the things is when people get 60 years old, they they see those prices, $150, $200. And they're like, oh, how much life insurance am I gonna get, Dominique? And they're like, um, I tell them, you know, no more than $25,000. And they seem very upset. And I tell them, you have to start young. And also, too, is when you, when you do, that's been um, looking to talk to someone about life insurance, investment, or anything, make sure you get enough information so you can make sure you make a sound decision. Mm-hmm. I see, I end up seeing a lot of them, Mike, is that people end up listen to someone like me, even though I am the expert, but no one gives them enough information so they can understand what they're getting themselves into. Yes. So now what that makes me think of is something really important. You are not a salesperson, whereas a lot of people in your industry push, 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 sell, 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 and the people feel confused and they're, they're frustrated. What you just said is you care about your clients and you teach them. You educate them on their options and you show them their options. And in many cases, I'm sure that you say, well, here's option one, two, and three, which one would you prefer? And all of them would be great for them. You're just showing them the differences. And to me, that is a really big comforting feeling for a a person to come to you and, and understand number one, what they're needing. And then number two, know that they have the power to choose. Yeah, absolutely right, Mike. That's one. Yeah, and then at the end, when they are choosing it themselves, they feel they feel better about it. So yeah. you know, when you walk away from walk away from me years from now, they can say that I chose this, not Dominic chose this for me. You yeah. know, because I think when I was at MetLife, I ran into a couple of people, people houses that got a VUL back in the nineties. As you know, in the nineties, the market was crazy. Everybody was doing exceptionally well until the bubble burst, and then things went down. And the VUL was based on the market. And 2010, starting at MetLife, I'm hearing people saying, uh, conversation like, why well, I got to come up with four or five or $6,000? Mm-hmm. I'm in retirement. I have a fixed income. And I asked them, did you, um, when you bought your products, what information did you get from your life insurance person? And the first thing they would say, well, I don't remember. And then also, mm-hmm. too, I did learn is that my mentor gave me that people, 
He said, as long as you've been in this industry more than five or seven years, Dominique, this is your career. A lot of people yep. get out of the industry before two to three. He said, but as long as you make it to five or seven, and that's one of the things I can give to all my clients and everyone that I deal with is that I'm in here for the long haul. I'm not here, you know, overnight just to make a little money and leave you high and dry. I'm here for you, you know, at least until, you know, my time come. <laughs> <laughs> and how long have you owned your company? Um, I've been owning my company for uh, seven years. Okay. So here's, here's a little, uh, uh, example. What you just said, um, made me think of this. A lot of times people, you know, are in their job or own the company seven years and they really only have one year of experience times seven. You know, they don't really learn. They don't really do anything different. They just kind of put their head down and say, next, here's your insurance policy. Here's your, but it's, I know that you are studying and learning and improving and watching for opportunities. So you have a true seven years experience now much more than that the industry but in the in your industry being an independent agent and that's a big distinction because some of these people that feel that you feel pushed and i don't really understand the process and they're pushing me to sign this paper they're just trying to make a paycheck and you are trying to make a lifelong friend out of this career because you're always learning and always watching for what's best for your client yeah, exactly right. That's one great thing about being independent where, you know, one of my um, mentors, I have few, quite a few, Mike, but one of my mentors told me, said, whatever you do, make sure you feel comfortable doing it. You know, if you don't feel comfortable, yep. don't do it. And that's one of the things. Maybe, if you wouldn't put your grandmother in this policy, then don't put your client in the policy. <laughs> yeah, exactly yep. right. You know, so what about some challenges that businesses face? You mentioned with families, you know, you need to plan for retirement well ahead of retirement. So you have some options. But what about businesses? Because that might bring up um, some new layers of need for them. So some of the things that business owners end up running into, it, we all think we're going to live forever. and think our business will run forever, correct? And one of the things is that a lot of them don't plan for retirement or plan for retirement or plan to sell any business or leaving the business at all. Or even if even if you're in business with someone and you both have a loan together, they don't even plan to be able to put um, plan to cover that person part of the loan. So one of the things is you like you can do a key man and a buy sale agreement. Those are some of the things that we do for our clients where if you're Mike, me, you was in business together and you end up passing away within the near future. And we have a 20 year loan, but what we'll do is we'll make sure you have insurance on you to be able to cover the loan, insurance on me to cover the loan. Our insurance, just say for instance, we own 50 50 within the business where that portion can be given to your wife or your kids rather than you be shortchanged anything or I be shortchanged left with the loan to where we both be, you know, that the wording we won't want to use, but it is what it is. We'll be asked out, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to make sure that your family is taken care of. I want to make sure my family is taken care of. So those are one of the things you can do for your um, business partner. And, I think it's most and, and, and that actually is a very wise planning move for, like you mentioned, business partner, but also employees. So having the right structures in place takes care of the business now, but also in the future, because if you did pass, you're going to leave your business in a good situation for the partners to take over your, your um, co-owners and as well as the employees, because as opposed to thinking of only your family, here's your, you know, kids or your wife or spouse or all of these, these different people personally on the business side of things, you've got your business family, you've got your partners, you've got your employees, and that acts like, you know, spouses and kids. So it really is the same thing line of thinking is we need to take care of things here to make sure the business continues on. You're exactly right. You know, and, and that's most, most important part. You got to make sure that you protect yourself and, you know, and every asset dealing with business. You know, sometimes we, you know, we dig our head, put our heads down, dig it in the weeds. Like you said, but being a captive agent, just like being the same thing with being a business owner, put our head down and just try to sell, sell, sell. But we don't think about the future. Yep. And like I said before at the beginning, you know, this at Dodge Juice Financial, we do believe in bridging the gap to your financial future because finance means future and everybody has to understand accounting means past. That's why, you you know, your taxes for your CPA, they look at what you have done in the past. And my goal is to make sure now I can't predict the future, but help yep. guide, guide you into the future with the right financial decisions. Well, um, I think you used a really important key word there, which is guide. You know, you're not the one telling them what to do for the future. You're guiding them and giving them those options. And I think that that becomes such a huge value to your individual clients, your business clients. Um, can you think of uh, uh, 
any extra value things that you uh, want your clients and your um, um, friends, really, your relate people you're building relationships with, in addition to being that um, independent uh, uh, provider that guides them into these decisions, what's uh, some other value that you're bringing to your clients in the course of your business? You know, uh, uh, especially when I'm dealing with clients as well, um, one of the things I am a business coach as well, and one of the things is I bring to the table with them is that, you know, de- been in the business for almost 12 years dealing with business owners and families. You know, I hear some of all this, hear, hear a lot of stories mm. and also doing my research and doing my due diligence and make sure I'm constantly learning and make sure I can help business owners be um, in the best predicament. Because one of the things is, I think, over the last two or three years, you know, like the PPP loan, a lot of people missed mm-hmm. out on the PPP loan. A lot of people missed out on, especially dealing with um, getting loans in general and grants, because most of them they have that business lined up properly to be able to get those grants. It can be anything from your address, from your checking account not matching your um, mm. your business address or your LLC, or you don't even have your business license. Those are some of the things that I do personally to be able to work with um, some of my clients as well. When you go to my website, I do have a link that you um, own that, that you can go for like, you know, financial strategy consultant as well, that um, I can be able to help you out. And I also believe in working with others to make sure I can make sure all business owners and families are taken care of well. Because, you know, I'm Mike, one of the things is I don't know all. Yep. <laughs> Do surround myself with a team of people that can help assist me to make sure that I make the right decisions for you and help guide you as well. Well, I think that's spectacular, and I think that anyone listening to this might want to have that, you know, extra set of eyes and a second opinion, taking a look at their uh, uh, situation as they head toward retirement. So, Dominique, if someone is interested in learning more, and then as well as reaching out and connecting with you, what's the best way they can uh, do that? Um, the best way you can do that is by going to um, dijuicefinancial dot com, and um, and you should be able to find my contact information there. We look forward to hearing from you. Well, Dominic, thank you so much for coming on today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Oh, thank you, Mike. And I truly appreciate it. One of the things I want to leave off with, you know, um, in the classes that I teach for kids is that um, make sure that um, the five people you hang around is the income, lifestyle, attitudes you're going to have. So mm-hmm. make sure you surround yourself with the right people. Today, I was surrounding myself with a wonderful guy by the name of Mike. You know, I'm looking to build a long relationship up with him. That's excellent advice. Uh, Birds of a feather flock together. So make sure you're picking the right people to flock with. (laughs) Yes, Awesome. Thank you, Dominic. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.